welcome back to my YouTube channel, Doom and Lovely Things. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to be doing a review of um, Tamar Braxton, Get Your Life, um, Season 1, Episode 1, something about beginnings. So um, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and of course comment if you watched it and um, tell me what you think about the review that I've done. And of course let me know if you want me to do more reviews and um, basically what you want to see more of in my channel. So um, in this episode, the episode starts off with Tema basically on camera talking about, you know, um how she's lost everything, lost her husband and her stuff and everything and how that's made her feel and basically that she's at a stage in her life right now where she's rebuilding um, and she is kind of just trying to um, align her life again, um, make music again. She talks about how she's estranged from her her family, her sisters, and if you watch um, Braxton Family Values, you will know that they're very, it's a very close-knit family. So um, she talks about how she's distant from them, and she feels quite alone. Um, so one of the first scenes, she's having a meeting with Mona Scott Young, and she's talking about how, you know, she wants to commit to this process, and she commits to not walking away and seeing it through, because, guys, we know that Tema has had in the past um instances of walking out on production and actually has has been known for maybe making production stop and for the Braxton family values and just kind of not making it as easy process as possible so um when Scott Young and Tema have that conversation about you know you're gonna need to commit and you're gonna need to see it through, etc. Okay, then um we get introduced to this lady named Goli, and Goli is like a dream interpreter. Okay, she tells you what your dreams about, and what she was saying is that um it's more it's not so much like what your dreams tell you um more so it's not like someone is communicating with you via your dreams it's more what's coming inside like it's like you are talking to yourself basically through your dreams so your subconscious is like talking to you like the things that are worrying you come to light in your dreams kind of thing that's what goldie was saying basically so i'm south african and in south africa that's called sangoma <laughs> but a sangoma operates differently it's not like that you're you are talking to yourself through your dreams it's more like um you know your ancestors are trying to communicate with you and they communicate with you via your dreams so then david has an opinion about this david is tamar's boyfriend and he feels that this is not aligned to um christianity that it's a form of witchcraft and um he doesn't want tamar to participate in it and he himself doesn't want to um follow whatever the guidelines that goldie is giving for this whole process which is going to last 45 days uh goldie had said that for those 45 days tamar must not have sex must not use drugs um she said ganja ganja's weed must not smoke weed she mustn't drink. Um. So when Tamar told David these things, he was like, "I need sex for forty. I can't not have sex for forty five days. A man has needs and stuff like that." And then she he also alluded to you know they didn't show us the full clip. Um. They were you know it's like a throw it forward where they want to tell us like in future this is gonna be something that that um David says. Um so far like i haven't really seen the reason why you know there have been a lot of headlines and blogs about how tamar um tried to commit suicide is did she really try to commit suicide or was it just a ploy to get out of the contract um there's there's like a theory that the reason why she did that was because um the way that she was being portrayed and the way that uh david was being portrayed they were not comfortable with so they were trying to kind of you know put the put the brakes on that pump the brakes on that so i'm not really sure about how true that is but i don't know i didn't really see anything worse than what we've already seen with tamar being on television 
um her relationship with vince was a, it seemed from people who are watching that it was very tumultuous um so they had had many arguments on screen that that were nothing compared to what we saw in the first episode i don't know if we're gonna see more in um upcoming episodes that will make us maybe cringe or you know make us see david or tamar in a negative way but in the first episode i didn't really see why they would not want the show to be aired okay so then the show goes on goes on goes on goes on and then um there's this there's this scene where i can't remember the name of the music producer um i'll look for it and put it down here um, Tamar basically hires this music producer and she admits that's the first time she makes music um, after her very first album without Vince and it's her the first time she's making music on her own and then she says she's shy to sing in front of people huh like how like how my friend like 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 how because that's your job um, like if I don't get it I, I don't understand what you're trying to say because I've seen performances where Tema performs. So how are you shy to sing in front of people? And also, I thought like, okay, let's say you're shy to write in front of people. Because when you're creative, you need to be by yourself. Then why did you show up to the studio empty-handed? Then you should have maybe shown up with like a notebook full of, okay, so I'm shy. I'm, I'm struggled to do it in front of people. But on my own, this is what I came up with. Maybe I can give it to you or we can discuss it and we can edit out and you know, filter it out and, and make it better. But to come empty handed and then say, you're not gonna do anything for me. That was a bit like, like, what do you actually want? Like, do you want this? You know what I mean? Like it just fell to me. I don't know. And Tamar, I hope you don't, if you see this, please don't take this the wrong way, but I doubt you'll see this. But if you do, please don't take this the wrong way. I just feel like, you're not sure that you want to be a musician and a singer and you're not ready to give that everything that you have because that just sounded like an excuse for me for you not to do it. You just didn't want to do it. So you made up an excuse. Like, I don't understand what you're trying to say, boo boo. Like you, you're shy to sing in front of people, but you're a singer. How? How sway? How? How sway? That doesn't make sense to me at all. Anyway, then there's another scene with the same producer later on. Because I think the producer was booked to be there for two days. So the first day they met, she didn't have anything. She shied to sing in front of him. She asked him, do you have any beats? And he's like, no, I work with, we have two feet off of each other. So that just ended. Waste of time, in my opinion. The second um, time that the, this guy comes up, her voice is hoarse. Again, for me, it's like, okay, as a singer, you ought to know that, okay, tomorrow this guy is coming. I need to save my voice. I need to do one, two, three, four. I know that my voice gets stressed out if I don't sleep. I know, for, exa for me, example, I also like to sing. And I know if I don't sleep, I'll definitely lose my voice the following day. If I don't drink water, my voice will not be great. If I eat chocolate and chips and greasy food, my voice is not going to be great. So if I plan to sing and sing properly in front of people the following day or record a, a music or record a song, I know what to do to prep my voice. So for Tamar being Tamar, have, having had the experience that she's had, having been in the music industry, been singing all her life for her... To first of all, not know what to do to avoid being in that situation where her voice is going to be hoarse the day she needs to record. And secondly, for her voice to be hoarse and she doesn't know what to do as a professional just seemed more like Tema just really doesn't want to do this, you know. And I just ask myself, how many opportunities is she going to get? Because people give her have been giving her opportunities over and over and over again. And it just felt to me like it's like, you know, she's not maximizing the chances and the platforms that she's been given. Um, no shade, no judgment. Um, I don't know her struggle. I don't know her life. I don't know what it's like to be her. Um, and there might just be, you know, valid reasons why she does the stuff that she does. But to me, an outsider looking in, remember, you. Ma she made this TV show. She shot those shots. Um, she might not have been part of the edits, but she said everything that she said and she was hoarse 
and she was complaining that's like no one cares that she's hoarse you know what i mean those are not um variables that depend on interpretation those are facts those are things that actually happened even if there were edits but there was no way that there was an edit that made her hoarse for example there was no way that there was an edit then um there was a part where she um they played back so, so she recorded and it sounded like she was whispering then they played back the music to her and she was like oh, it was trash like i think that that was edited out because she referenced the verse she didn't like the hook was dope and the, we heard the hook from the show and it really was a dope hook like i can't wait to hear that song it sounds so awesome i think i'm gonna love it um I can understand because Tamar really has a high range and anybody who knows about singing, if you have a high range and you want to hit those high notes, you have to be a hundred percent. It's not easy hitting those high notes, like hitting the types of high notes that Tamar hits. If you have, if you have a, 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 a an, an average range, um, and you know, like a, like a Whitney Houston type of range or a, a Dell type of range, it's cool. But remember that song that Adele, never mind, I'll find someone like you. She started singing, don't forget me. And then she changed it to don't forget me. Yeah. Cause when you sing those high notes, you ha your voice has to be one hundred and thousand bazillion percent because it's so easy to pitch the higher you go um and then also the higher you go the thinner your voice may sound and you want to be able to attack a note with the fullness of your voice so if you're having like problems and your horse and stuff you're gonna definitely want to make sure that um that you're able to attack the notes and you hit the, the notes properly. So if she went into that, and I can definitely see how the verse would have been crap if her voice was not all the way 100. But then again, she's supposed to know how to. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the producer went to the effort of even bringing the the studio to her house instead of her going somewhere else. And I also reading in between the lines got got the sense that there was smoke in the studio um the other day that caused for her to be hoarse but st still man it just came across like tamar didn't really want to participate and give it her all in that way and yeah that's basically the 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 the, the episode ended where um goldie and tamar okay so tamar had a dream and in the dream um, she was dating Tyler Perry and so uh, they went into Tyler Perry's car to go to Tyler Perry's house and when they got to the house there was a woman there and in Tamar's dream the woman was t uh, Tyler Perry's side chick and then she was fighting Tyler Perry like a disrespect me you know how Tamar gets and then they got into the car and then the car slide was sliding down a slope um, and then um she jumped out of the car before the car crashed and then she was like yeah i told you i was gonna be okay i knew it was gonna be okay and then she woke up so she was interpreting this dream with goalie and um she said that um what she got was from the dream was that the um she doesn't accept help very easy and actually the woman in the dream was an angel there to help her but she assumed the worst and um i think that vince and tamar are like you know what i'm saying that i think tamar still loves vince and i think tamar regrets the divorce from vince this is what i think not that it's fact and i would love to see them get back together because i think that he really tried his best to support her and assist her you know what i mean um, I don't know about David's intentions. I really haven't seen that enough of him for me to have an opinion about him and how he treats her and all of that. Um, I didn't really, I can't say I saw anything that for me was a red flag yet, but I think these dreams and everything that Tamar's going through subconsciously has a lot to do with Vince. I think she feels that in, in my, the way I understand her dream is in her dream, Tyler Perry is Vince, okay, and I don't know who the white, the, the, the woman was, who was there, I don't, 
I don't know. But I think that it's all about, it really it's about Vince. And she has a lot of unresolved issues about her marriage and divorce to Vince. And it really breaks my heart. Tamar is so talented. I think she's her worst enemy. She said even in the in the clip that she in the in the episode that she feels like she's gone in her own way a lot and i think that that is so true um i think there's nothing wrong with her being tamer and like tay tay and uh, you know all of those cute things that she does i love them they're entertaining but when it's time to make business decisions and boss moves then she you have she has to make boss moves like she can't be clicking her tongue and you know twisting her neck and you know being like this in a business meeting you you can't do that you know you have to think and be professional and um have a level temperament and all of those things just so that the business side of things can go well for you um so yeah i think that that's that's really her biggest um flop for herself you know she's really let herself down in that way in my opinion but I'm really rooting for her and I'm crossing my fingers that things are going to work out, you know, and they're going to work out well because she's so talented, she's so gifted and she has so much to give. And I just really hope that things work out well for her. I hope that her and Vince can reconcile. I hope her and her sisters can reconcile. Um, yeah, I just hope everything goes well. Anyway, that's it for my level for my review of... Tamer, get your life. Or is it fix your life? Get 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 your life. For Tamer, Tamer, get your life. Episode one, season one. Something to do with beginning. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought of the episode and what you thought of this review, and if you'd like for me to do more. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, I love it when you comment. Comment down below. I will respond to each and every. I will. I promise. Love y'all. Thank you for watching. Bye.